Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel for the Renaissance English History Podcast in the vivid tapestry of the Tudor era amidst kings and queens, politics and power struggles. We find a myriad of fascinating characters. One such figure is Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, a nobleman who wielded both the pen and the sword with equal prowess. Welcome to our deep dive into the life of Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey. If you are new here, a very special warm welcome to you. I'm your host, Heather Tesco. I've been podcasting on Tudor England since 2009. This channel here is where I put all of my episodes from my podcast and all my different shows, as well as lots of extra content like this video right here. And you know what time it is. It's time for me to remind you that TudorCon is coming up in just over six weeks, September 8th through 10th, and time is running out to get in-person tickets. So you only have a couple of weeks left for in-person tickets, englandcast.com slash TudorCon to learn more. Or the streaming tickets, you don't have a deadline on the streaming tickets, englandcast.com slash TudorCon online to learn more about the streaming tickets. All right, let's step back in time to the tumultuous period of the 16th century and look at the life of Henry Howard, the Earl of Surrey. He was born in 1517, the eldest son of Thomas Howard, the third Duke of Norfolk, one of the most powerful noblemen in England. His mother was Lady Elizabeth Stafford. She was a formidable figure herself, being the daughter of Edward Stafford, the third Duke of Buckingham. We recently did a whole podcast episode on the Stafford Dukes of Buckingham. So if you want to dig deeper into that family, I will put a link in the description. So the Howard family had huge significance during the Tudor period. Their ties to the royalty was both a source of prestige and peril. As the saying goes, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown, and you could also add, and those that are close to it, right? The Howards were continually entangled in politics of the court, a theme that would be a defining aspect of Surrey's life. Growing up, Surrey was no stranger to the grandeur and the dangers of court life. From a young age, he was steeped in the lessons of chivalry, politics, and the arts, the essential education for a nobleman of his time. Through his family, he was closely related to two of Henry VIII's wives, Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard, both of whom, of course, met tragic ends. These familial connections placed Surrey in an auspicious but precarious position, foreshadowing his turbulent life. With this background of power, politics, and royal ties, he was set to become a major player in the Tudor court. He was educated by some of the finest tutors of his time, which helped him to cultivate a deep appreciation for literature and the arts. Even at a young age, he was a gifted poet, mastering both the art of language and very intricate forms of poetry. Among his notable achievements was his pioneering works of sonnets in the English literature. He was inspired by Petrarch's works, and he worked with his friend Thomas Wyatt, who was also an early poet, uh, spent time in the Tower for his relationship with Anne Boleyn. They were actually the first to write sonnets in English paving the way for later poets like Shakespeare. Their friendship and mutual influence made a lasting impact on English poetry. Surrey was also a man of action. In 1542, he was given a significant military role during the campaign against Scotland, showcasing his strategic mind. This, however, was also going to bring him into conflicts and the controversies that would shadow his later life. At court, he held an influential position. He was friends with Henry Fitzroy, who was the king's illegitimate son. And so that brought him into the very inner circles of power. Yet, of course, court life was a dangerous game. And Surrey's position often put him at odds with other ambitious figures, causing tension and jealousy. Surrey was known to admire courtly love and, you know, participate in chivalrous conduct and adhere to kind of the rules of courtly love, which won him friends. But also he was very proud and he had a sharp wit. He could also make enemies very easily. So his noble birth and his high aspirations were both a boon and a curse, making him a respected yet very controversial figure in his time. 
lives. So in 1546, Surrey's life took a tragic turn. He was arrested and accused of treason, charged with planning to control the government during the impending minority of Prince Edward, Henry VIII's youngest son. So it's clear to everybody that Henry VIII's life is ending and people are vying for power. Who's going to be able to control the young future King Edward, who was you know, going to be very young at the time. So it would be a minority government. So people were kind of fighting over who was going to be on the council, who was going to control Edward. His family crest bearing the royal arms of England was seen as evidence of his very own claim to the throne. And this was treasonous. So he was put on trial. And despite his vigorous defense, he was found guilty. Not really surprising. In January 1547, just days before King Henry VIII's death, Surrey was beheaded on Tower Hill. His father, the Duke of Norfolk, narrowly escaped the same fate, saved only by the king's death. Despite his downfall, Surrey left behind a significant legacy. His introduction of the sonnet to English literature marked a turning point in the English Renaissance. His poems, filled with the language of chivalry and courtly love, are studied even today for their innovative style and emotional depth. Further, his descendants played a significant role in English history. His son, Thomas Howard, became the fourth Duke of Norfolk. And then, of course, he was also cousins with Queen Elizabeth I and Mary I. Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, was a man of contrast, a poet, a soldier, a nobleman, and a prisoner, a powerful player in the Tudor court who met an untimely end. His life story reminds us, like all of these nobles, of the volatility of power, the fragility of status, and the enduring impact of his art. Thanks so much for watching. If you have made it to the end of this video, I hope I earned your subscription to my channel and a press of that like button. I post videos like this almost every day. Who doesn't want their YouTube algorithm tutorified? Am I right? Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Make sure to drink your water. It's a hot one out there. I'll talk to you soon.